Well, hey there, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel where I bring you into my current DIY project where maybe I've done this before, maybe it's something brand new and I'm figuring it out as I go along. But I bring you along so that you can see that if I can do it, you can do this too. So today's project is bringing me back to my church's cafe if you caught my last video, I brought you along with building and staging a very large wood and pipe bookshelf. In this video, we're gonna work on this wall behind me. As you can see, it's pretty bare and it needs some life brought to it. There are two sections to this wall that I want to focus on. One is directly over the coffee cart, and that is the first thing that is seen when you walk in the door. As I'm doing this room, I'm, I'm breaking it into little sections, so you have moments. Just like if you were staging a bookshelf, you put these little moments, well, I'm doing that same thing with this large room. I'm creating little moments because otherwise it seems like this huge daunting space to try to make look nice. So, the next space of the little moment that we're gonna work on is over the coffee cart, and then right next to it, between the coffee cart and the fireplace, I want to do something there. So what I have in mind right now is to gather from the thrift store different frames that kind of go along with the colors of the room. Um, but because it's a cafe, we can do that eclectic look and just find different sizes and shapes and whatnot uh, to do a little photo collage, if that's the right word, frame collage. Um, of, and I want to put sayings in them. So this is, we call this the Revival Cafe because um, to honor revival history, but then also to be looking forward to the next revival that the Lord wants to bring. So um, I'm going to find quotes from revivalists that I feel are fitting to our church culture and print those out. And I'll take you along with that process and getting that done. So that's my idea for the space next to the fireplace. But then over the um, coffee cart, I want to get a larger sign. And um, from the bookshelf, there was a section of wood that I cut off to have a more open space. And I'm going to use that extra piece of board to make into floating shelves. I had been wanting floating shelves, but I kind of dismissed the idea. I was like, nah, I'll do other things. But when I realized I have, would have an extra piece of wood, I decided, perfect, this is going to be my floating shelves. Um, it is, we'll need cut in half, and then I can have two floating shelves to offset each other, and it will be awesome. So, those are my ideas. Now it's time to get to the thrift store, see what we can find, because when you're thrifting for decor, you can you know, have an idea of what you want, but then you have to go with what you find. Obviously I have the wood, so the shelves are fine. Um, but you gotta go with what you find at the thrift store. So once I get those things picked up and set, we can get to working on this wall. All right, so while at the thrift store, I grabbed a variety of frames I thought would work well together and kind of how I decided what I did and didn't want um, you know, black metal is kind of the main theme for um, for the ca cafe. So anything black I was looking for. Uh, I wanted a little bit of wood, some of the darker wood like we already have in the cafe. I did grab a frame that has a little red to help draw in the uh, red fireplace in the room. And then as far as metal accents other than the black, I want to go with gold, not silver. So I didn't pick any silver frames. Picked a couple gold frames, a couple wood frames, and different sizes. And uh, to make it simple on myself, I'm just using Canva. They have um, you know, already made up little designs. So for my smaller frames, I just went on to Canva and sized it up, which you know I had to Google what are the megapixels for a four by six frame and things like that. And that was once I figured out I could do that I, on Canva, you can size up the picture you want. But then when I would go to print it, it still wasn't the right size. So I just kind of had to eyeball it and go shrink by 50 or shrink by 75 and print a couple times. So it did waste some ink, but I think this was faster and cheaper than going online and searching and ordering prints. And um, I could just get it done quickly by my computer. I did run out of ink 
and I had to run to the store and get more as this, I don't know if you could see it, but there's little white lines in my little graphic. So I got ink, need to finish that up. And then as I'm doing the cafe, I grabbed a set of matching um, paint samples and I was kind of going off of these colors you know our walls kind of a grayish white color and then these colors all fit together nicely so i was trying to find frames within this you know color scheme ish and because it's a, a coffee shop feel i feel like I can, it can have more of that eclectic um maybe even a little more eccentric frames and it will work together um, I wouldn't probably choose these frames for my own home, but it's a different feel, different style. So um, having a color swatches to know what I'm going for is helpful. So I can go, oh yeah, this fits within this color scheme versus having this random pops of color. Although I did do that with the bowl with the orange swirl in it, but that was on purpose. So um, I need to clean up these frames. They're a little dusty. I'm just gonna use a little soapy water and a microfiber towel. This was also already done in Canva. And I'm gonna paint this white and then just Mod Podge this on so I can keep the wood frame. I thought that looked really cool. So, the depth of our repentance will determine the depth of our revival. I hear that that's what it takes, repentance. And I think from experience, repentance is key because it's letting go of the things that aren't of God in our lives. And when we let those go, all of God can come in. And that's when we see transformation in our own lives and then in our churches and our community. Because the power of God comes in and transforms and sets us free. That's what it brings. It's freedom. It's not slavery to legalism and rules. That's religion. But revival is freedom. So... All right, I'm gonna get to work on this. stinks. So this had good reviews for being able to wipe off the chalk. So we'll see how it goes. It's hard to tell from the camera angle, but this frame needs painted because there's a few nicks in it and it has orange paint showing through from a previous color choice. So I chose this gold paint to just touch it up and make it have a little bit more shine. While I wait for the paint to dry on my chalkboard, I realized I need to come up with a design uh, for the chalk drawing that I now need to put on that and that's not something I do very often I'm not a doodler um, so I came up with something on Canva using some of their doodles and fun stuff to uh, get a basic idea and then I'm gonna try my hand just on scrap paper to see if I can come up with something that's kind of coffee shop-esque chalkboard looking thing um we'll see we will work with what i can do so um i'm gonna practice 
Let's see, see if I can make this look cool. So let's see. So I saw on another YouTube video, Tina Lay, I believe is how she says her name, uh, really cool YouTube channel, totally recommend checking it out, that when you have fresh chalk paint, you need to uh, season it, otherwise the paint soaks up the chalk and I guess it's hard to erase later. So you just rub chalk all over the entire board and then erase it off. So um, I hope this is the right thing to do. I've never heard of that before. That doesn't look good. I don't think the paint's supposed to come off. I've never used chalk paint before. If uh, you have experience in this and know that this is normal, totally comment and let me know. Or maybe it's only sad a day. Maybe they didn't let it go long enough, but it's kind of how this channel goes, right? You get into DIYs that you've never done and you just learn as you go. So it's all good. If I can do it, you can do it too. So like I said, to make these floating shelves, I have the one board, so I'm just gonna cut it lengthwise to make it into two. It's supposed to be a 12 inch board, which technically it's under 12 inches. This one measured to 11 and a quarter inches. So then ideally I would have a six, two six inch boards. So I bought six inch pegs for the floating shelves. Um, which actually it would be less than six inches it would be more like five and a half almost just a little over five and a half inches each um and so that's that's what i'm cutting marking my line and i don't have a table saw so i just used my circular saw and did the best i could i did have a little notch left over that i had to saw off by hand and then um, i used a 220 grit sandpaper to just smooth stuff out and make sure there was nothing I was gonna catch anything and then I just used my Danish oil. I'm really liking this Danish oil and stain the edges. I just wiped them on. I didn't even bother wiping it off later. I mean, I maybe did a quick wipe, but super fast and efficient. I really like using this. And after they sat for a few hours, they were ready to go. All right, so now that we have everything gathered and prepared and ready, the frames have their sayings in them, the wood is stained and cut and stained, the chalkboard is painted, um, we are ready to start organizing and hanging these pictures. I'm so excited to see this come to life, but at the same time, this is the part of a project where it's like there's a lot of brain crunching when you originally are envisioning something, and then you gather everything, and then now to get it like up in place, it's like my brain goes, no pressure, but, once you get it up there, especially if it's screwed in with wall anchors, it's stuck. Unless you screw the pipe bracket in the wrong place and then you have to take it out. But if you don't have to, you don't want to. So no pressure, but you gotta get it right the first time. Uh, so anyway, let's get some stuff hung on the walls. Before hanging my frames on the wall, I'm just going to lay them out and get a rough idea. It'll change a little once I put them up, but this will give me an idea. And then I'm using um, painter's tape to get a rough idea of what it's going to look like when I have everything up so I can get things centered and, and make sure I've got things aligned how I would like. I really like the simplicity of these Velcro photo hangers. They're so nice. The only downside is you can kind of see them. Maybe I'm not hanging them right, I don't know, but it definitely makes things go up very quick and efficiently. I'm out of pictures, that's all I bought. I thought I had enough. Might need to add something down there or something here to pull it that way. I'll have to think about it. So this might seem funny, but I just stuck random things on the wall over here to kind of give me a visual 
to see how it looks. And I definitely think I should get a square thing, a little thing, and then another square thing of some sorts. And that will, I think, finish off the wall nicely. Back to the thrift store, not a problem. I actually did not go to the thrift store. I was at Dollar Tree at, to look for some other decor stuff and was in the frame section and thought, oh, great, I'll pick these up. And I got a variety of things I liked. I liked this little wood chalkboard. I thought it was cute considering I already had a chalkboard, but I didn't like how light the color of wood is. So I just took, and I've seen other people do this, antiquing wax and watered it down and just took a, I think I even took a paper towel because this is like a small project and just dunked it in a little bit of that and rubbed it on just to darken the frame. This is going to be inside. It doesn't have to weather anything. It doesn't have to weather use. So this is just fine and it worked great. It turned out great. Now we can hang up a few more pictures to complete this photo wall. So you know how I told you my boards were going to be less than six inches and I bought a six inch pipe set for the floating shelves? Well, by six inches, they must meant five and a half inches because my boards are too long, as you can see. And I thought, I don't want to go home and cut these down a little sliver and sand and stain again. That's going to take a lot of time. So what I figured out I could do is just unscrew the tip a little bit and screw it on as tight as I could and it'll be fine. How I decided to hang these, which I would prefer to have been able to attach the brackets to the shelf and then mount the shelf all at one time, that would have made it easier for leveling, but because the screw hole would be block blocked by the board, I needed to screw at one peg in at a time. So I just marked on the board five inches, five and a half inches in. I thought that looked nice for once it was hung and I marked that on the board and then I hung the first peg because I could put that wherever I wanted and then after that I had to level from there which uh that proved to be interesting because the room ceiling is not level it is a metal roof that slants from the front of the building to the back so any sidewall going from front to back actually has a slanted painted line so that the black portion of the ceiling is the same size from one end to the other but the white painted portion is not so i knew this from when i hung the bookshelf so instead of making my shelf level, I actually had to get somebody else to give me their eye and had to tell me what looked level, which literally is not level. As you can uh, see here, when I put the level on it to make the bubble in the center, you have to put it down a little bit in order for it to look level from standing afar back because the black line at the top is not level. I had to make it unlevel. It's so funny. It's kind of a trick of the eye, but it's better to look level than be level at this point because it's not structural, so it's fine. Once I attached the shelves with those brackets and got both of them hung and looking level, I needed to figure out where to hang the chalkboard, and I just took a piece of tape where the tip of the wire was and put that on the wall so that I could go back and put a nail in and hang it up. And then before hanging it, I need to obviously draw out the cafe sign, um, which I think turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about how this looks.
super pleased that this is done by Easter. I hope you enjoyed this transformation and got some ideas for your own next projects as well. If you did like this, would you hit that like button? I'd really appreciate it. And if you like videos like this, check out these other videos. You might like them as well. And as always, thank you for joining me in this adventure. And I will catch you in my next video.